Happy New Year 2021! Greetings and welcome to the first video of a series of tips on creating bar charts in Microsoft Excel. The first video looks at controlling whether the datasets row labels or column labels become the chart's category access labels. So let's take a minute to review a bar chart's basic structure by identifying its axes. A bar chart has two axes, a vertical axis and a horizontal axis. Microsoft bar charts use the vertical axis to represent the names of the things being charted or categories. Microsoft refers to this axis as the chart's category axis. A bar chart uses the horizontal axis to represent the data. Microsoft refers to this axis as the chart's data series axis. This video looks at how to control whether the category axis labels come from the data sets row labels or from the data sets column labels. There are three possible ways Excel could select the category labels based upon the data selected by a user. First, if the user selects more rows of data than columns of data, then Excel uses the row labels for the category labels on the chart. Second, if the user selects the same number of rows of data and columns of data, then Excel uses the column labels for the category labels on the chart. Third, if the user selects more columns of data than rows of data, then Excel uses the column labels for the category labels on the chart. So let's get started looking at each one of these situations using a data set. Now, let's look at the first situation where more rows of data are selected than columns of data by selecting the cell range A1 to C3. Now, let's look at the first situation where more rows of data are selected than columns of data. 1. On the worksheet, select the cell range A1 to C7. 2. On the ribbon, click the Insert tab. 3. On the Insert ribbon, click the Column Chart button. 4. On the Column Chart menu, in the 2D Bar section, click the Clustered Bar Chart. 5. Let's move the chart so it's not blocking our view of the data set. Notice that the data selected for the chart consists of 6 rows of data and 2 columns of data, so that the number of rows of data selected is, exceeds the number of columns selected. Also, notice that the category labels on the category or vertical axis are drawn from the cell range A2 to A7. So, if the user selects more rows of data than columns of data, Excel selects the data set's row headings as the category access labels. Now, let's look at the situation where the number of rows of selected data is the same as the number of columns of selected data. In this scenario, let's create a chart using the cell range A1 to F6. 1. Select the cell range A1 to F6. 2. On the ribbon, click the Insert tab. 3. On the Insert ribbon, click the Column Chart button. 4. On the Column Chart menu, in the 2D Bar section, click the Clustered Bar Chart. A bar chart appears on the worksheet. 5. Let's move the chart so it's not blocking our view of the data set. Notice that the data selected for the chart consists of 5 rows of data and 5 columns of data. So the number of rows of selected data and the number of columns of selected data are equal. Also, notice that the category labels on the category or vertical axis are drawn from the cell range B1 to F1. So Excel is using the data set's column labels for the category access labels. So, if the user selects the same number of rows of data and columns of data, Excel selects the data set's column headings as the category access labels. Finally, let's look at the situation where the number of columns of selected data is greater than the number of selected rows of data. In this scenario, let's create a chart using the cell range A1 to G3. 1. On the worksheet, select the cell range A1 to G3. 2. On the ribbon, click the Insert tab. 3. On the Insert ribbon, click the Column Chart button. 4. In the Column Chart menu, in the 2D Bar section, click the Clustered Bar Chart. A clustered bar chart appears on the worksheet. 5. Let's move the chart so it's not blocking our view of the data set. Notice that the data selected for the chart consists of two rows of data and six columns of data, so the number of columns is greater than the number of rows. 
Also, notice that the category labels on the category or vertical axis are drawn from the cell range B1 to G1. So Excel uses the column labels from the dataset for the category access labels. So if the user selects more columns of data than rows of data, Excel selects the dataset's column headings as the category labels. This video looked at how the number of selected rows of data or columns of data impacts where Excel gets the category labels for the bar charts category access. If the user selects more rows of data than columns of data, Excel uses the row labels from the dataset for the bar charts category access labels. If the user selects an equal number of rows of data and columns of data, Excel draws the category access label from the dataset's column headings. Finally, if the user selects more columns of data than rows of data, Excel uses the dataset's column labels for the category access labels. The next tip is a subseries of videos that looks at three ways to override Excel's default behavior of choosing which cells to use for the category access labels. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put them in the comment section below. If you would like a text version of this video, please contact me by email. Until the next video, best wishes for 2021.